Now, we all know it's a very expensive business designing a new car. It costs millions and millions of pounds. Now, Porsche set the trend for not bothering with the styling each time. No, I mean the new 911. Same as the old 911. Yeah, new Boxster, we're looking at it later mm. in the show. Exactly the same as the old one. Exactly. Now, Mitsubishi have gone one step further by not bothering with the entire car. Have a look at this. It's the new Mitsubishi Evo 9. Which looks pretty much exactly the same as the Evo 8. Uh, yes, well, it, it is. Engine? Fact, uh, the same. Suspension? Pretty much the same. Price? Uh, that's the same, £28,000 it starts from. It is, in fact, exactly the same car. What they've done here, it's very clever, is cross out 8 and write on 9. <laughs> That's pretty much it. That's genius. I, it's, I, it's fantastic. Right, your mobile phone, OK? Now, you're not allowed to use this when you're driving, because that's illegal now, so you have to have a hands-free kit. Yes, yeah. And the problem then is... <laughs> <laughs> Hello? You got, yeah, don't work. They're rubbish. They right? are rubbish. Hands-free kits are rubbish. Ah. Not this one. <laughs> This is called the Phobile, OK? And the brilliant thing is, it's got an attachment on it, you stick it straight in your mobile phone and break it, like that, and then... Is that real? Yeah, it works. <laughs> <laughs> White or 12, 12, please. Technically, you are hands-free Completely. There. So you can buy those, then? Yeah, they're at mail order, 33 quid. You get a red one, you get straight through to Fighter Command HQ and scramble some Spitfire. <laughs> hey, now, hey, 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 hey. Did you know 80% of Ford Focuses sold in Sweden run on alcohol? Didn't know that, no. No, it is. It's not like, it's not Bacardi Breezes. It's, uh, it's made from sugar and wood, apparently. That's the out where I live, in Gloucestershire, we would drink that. That's a cocktail. <laughs> well, you know one of them wooden sugar cocktails, do you? Well? That's nice. Anyway, the point is, is that they're planning on introducing this fuel here. Yeah, they are, but there's a problem that I've seen. What? Because they're going to sell it from normal petrol stations, but they're going to distribute it, or you're going to put it in your car through something called an alco pump. <laughs> which, is, which essentially means that when you get on the petrol station in the evening, it'll be full of teenagers in hoods. Yes. <laughs> Can't get served in the town, let's go down the filling station, fill up on wood and, what is it, sugar? Right, we've got to mention the Top Gear survey. Oh, yes, that's important. It, it is, is very important. important, because the thing is, is that we can test cars on the show and we can tell you how fast they are and how big the boot is and so on, but only you can tell us what they're like to actually <laughs> own in terms of reliability. <laughs> well, <laughs> just recent experiences, that's all. Oh, stop <laughs> it! <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you what it's like to own a Ford GT, there but you sadly... Go. Um, how can I put this? Are you the sort of chap who likes the popular melodies from the big musicals? Yes. Um, do you have a lot of scatter cushions around your flat? Do you go out in a vest at night with a yes. moustache? Are you well groomed? Do you look like this man? <laughs> that's what we're getting at. <laughs> Well, we've got the car for you. Here it is. It is called the Nissan Micra C Plus C oh. Coupe Plus <laughs> Coupe. Nice. You'll love this. Come yeah. and have a look at this. <laughs> it's That's a bit of a right up your there. street. Yeah. It goes with the face hair and everything. Yeah. You like that? My street. Up your street. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're about to hit. Does it come with a hard top? <laughs> oh, um, yes, it does. It comes with a metal folding roof, as is fashionable. Uh, that's going to cost less than £14,000 coming out of Christmas. Coming, coming out. out? Coming out. Business, this car. That's already out, I'd say. Um, now, the, now, the AA has launched a roadmap this week. Uh, got it here. What makes this one different is that they featured in it every single speed camera location in the country, OK? Now, well, hang on. Some people have been saying this week that this is a bad idea, but we've had a meeting and uh, we've decided it isn't. It isn't. It's a brilliant idea. Because if you've seen around, does anyone here live near Stoke-on-Trent here, OK? If you go from Stafford to Stoke, look, you've got... Speed camera, 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 speed camera. It's just now a that's joke. the sort of information we need. Exactly, because you can go up to Eccleshall and then up here, no speed cameras at all up there. <laughs> See, now how can knowing that not be a good idea? That's a good idea. This is the Dear. roadmap we must all have. Good. Good news for rural inbreds this week. Hummer, the people who make those enormous pseudo-military off-roaders, you know this sort of thing, they have come out with a new range. Of aftershave and smelly stuff. There it is. Hummer. Mm, it's the first name that springs to me. Do you have a look at that? There you go. Yeah. It's nice. When you open the top, listen to the sound. Yes, exactly. <laughs> oh, de Guaranteed not to repel your sister. Yes. <laughs> Splash it on and make him squeal like a piggy. It's, um, I think that's remarkable. Actually, a better tip, if, 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 if you're thinking about this, just wash instead. That would be a little <laughs>
You'll love that. <laughs> now, there's a new... Mis Ooh, the news! And the big news this week is Jeremy has been banned from driving for six months. Yes, he has. <laughs> I'm really sorry to disappoint you. I have to point out that uh, it wasn't his local magistrate that banned him, it was his doctor. It was, and that's why it's taking him so long to get to the stage. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, you look like you're in pain. Yes, I oh, am. Dear. I have what a top have you... speed of one. What have you done? I've slipped two discs really? in my back, and they've told me not to drive or write. Thank you <laughs> so much for that. <laughs> What you do. That's kind of what I do. Uh, no, it's quite interesting. The doctor did say, how do you take exercise? <laughs> Not really. So he deduced that I must have done it by all that oversteer stuff on the track. So you've over-oversteered? I've over-oversteered. I've, I've now got repetitive oversteer injury. Oh. And we therefore, we therefore have a problem because if I... We're OK for this series because we've done all the films we need to do. But for the next series, if I can't do the oversteer stuff on the track... Well, I can start it, but I, I, it's where I'm going to end up. I, usually in a tree or bunch. <laughs> anywhere. And James can't do oversteer because he thinks that oversteer is a left-wing plot of yeah, some yeah. kind. <laughs> so, yes, no, it's not. It really isn't funny. I tell you what is giggle, though, is um, the doctor said to me, he said that the three most painful conditions in medicine are giving birth, passing a kidney stone, and what I've got. Yes. Has it, women here, have you had children? You have. You know that lying around screaming thing you do? That's so bad! I'm presenting a show while in that much pain. <laughs> you know, I am off my face on morphine. <laughs> Should we move on? Yeah. Yes, I'd like, to talk, I'd like to talk about Proton. They're a Malaysian manufacturer. They work in a jungle clearing and they produce small, cheap and cheerful cars. No, they don't. There's no such thing as cheap and cheerful. It's no. cheap and nasty and expensive and cheerful. Just get that clear in your head. <laughs> I retract the word cheerful. Um, Proton, they're a Malaysian company making cheap cars yeah. in a jungle clearing. But, of course, the interesting thing is that they own Lotus and they've come out with a new car and they're saying that the way you should think of this is my first Lotus. Do you really? want to see it? The Proton Sammy. <laughs> First and last Lotus, if you ask me. Look at it. It's on sale in September, and it's going to cost £7,000. So it's actually my first Proton. Exactly. That's really what it is. Get it off the screen. I don't want to see it anymore. Have you got something more interesting? I'm... You know cars over the years have been styled to look like sharks? BMW yep. 6 Series. Stingray. Corvette and so yeah. on. Fighter All aircraft. lions, Ooh, big jets. cats. What? Big jets. Fighter jets. The point is, is that Mercedes has decided that um, what we want is a car styled to look like a fish. There it is. It's a small yellow fish. It is, and that's, they say that's the most aerodynamic shape of any creature. Aerodynamic? It's a fish. It is a fish. It's actually, they've got the wrong word. It's hydrogen. If you threw that through the air, it would rot and it would just Dead. be a <laughs> glutinous mess. It wouldn't work at all. Nevertheless, they say we've made a car that looks like this. Would you like to see it? Yes, please. Yeah. Here it comes. Well, it does, actually. It does. Look like <laughs> it does. <laughs> I mean, it's just potty. They say it's a bionic car. Really? Now, I thought bionics were like robocar, which is sort of half flesh. With... Yeah, Steve Austin, yeah. transistors and... and yes, muscle. exactly, but they say that it's bionic because it looks like the fish. If you're going to buy one of these, and it's not for production yet, uh, it's a car, obviously, that looks like a fish, so if you live in Cornwall, uh, don't leave it on the street because a Spanish person will nick it. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> Technology-wise, it's got a normal diesel engine, but they say they've developed a magic fluid which is sprayed into the catalytic converter and which removes all the sort of unpleasantnesses that would normally come out of the back. Would anybody like to guess what this magic liquid is? No idea. Urine? Not oui. Red Bull, no, it's, <laughs> it's urine. Oui. Oui, oui. oui, oui. What, you wee on the catalytic converter and it... Yeah. So, what you're telling us, Jeremy, is Mercedes have invented a car that looks like a fish, is bionic, and will save the planet if you wee on it. Yeah. <laughs> Did you read the label on the tablets this morning? <laughs> <laughs> just... It's true. I mean, Mercedes have gone potty. Why don't they just give us the fuel cell stuff? I don't know why we have to have that, but there we are, we do. 295 brake horsepower, which is a bit more. It's lighter than usual, 0 to 60 in five and a half seconds. Costs you about £33,000. You know what the best thing about this is? It's got something called G-Attack. 
back suspension. Yes, it has. I've no idea what that is, but I want yes. that because I, I have the mental age of a six-year-old. I'm there, and I'd appreciate it if you had that on your car. Got to say though, why are Nismo messing around doing this when what they should be doing is bringing us a new skyline? You yes. remember the old one? I think we've got a picture of it here. Guys There's brilliant. the old one, OK? Now, that was about as good as cars got, OK? And that's what I want, is a new one of those. It was fabulous. That's an awful car. <laughs> <laughs> that's an awful car. The thing about those cars is they're, well, look, they're lumpy, bumpy, they've got spoilers, they usually have stupid wheels, they've got bulges on the bonnet, they've got a shiny interior, they're driven by idiots in baseball caps on the wrong way around. Has anybody here got a gun? Yeah. <laughs> That is a dreadful car. It's got pop-up screens and things. Do you know what I'd like? I'd like that new version of the Rolls-Royce, because it comes with some pens in the glove box. Have a look. That's <laughs> what you want. Like I said, has anyone got a gun? <laughs> a knife? Anything that we could kill him with? Maybe um, a G-Attack suspension? Yes, I will hit you over the head with some G-Attack. <laughs> Um, now, this year we drove uh, pretty well all the cars from uh, the Pacific Rim, and I decided that the worst of the lot, and there were some pretty bad ones, uh, was the Kia Rio. No, uh, no, it wasn't. It was that Hyundai Accent three-cylinder diesel. Oh, that you're is right, happened. you're right. The second worst car there was the Kia Rio. Well, they've brought out a new one, OK? Now, Kia say that it's powered by passion. They say it's exciting and aimed at young people with a dynamic lifestyle. Really? You want to see it? Yes. Mm. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> if you're a young person with a dynamic lifestyle, I'm guessing. Come and have a look at this yeah. and tell me what you think. Look at that. Yeah. It is awful. You couldn't, I couldn't have put it better myself. They've just written down a list of things they want it to be, haven't they? It's none of those things. What it is, it's for people who can no longer buy a Rover 25. <laughs> People go into the showroom and the man says, have one of these, love, it'll see you out. That should be Kia's marketing logo. The Kia Rio, it'll see you out, sir. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, yes, anyway, have you seen this plan to put these stickers on the windscreens of cars in showrooms? They're a bit like those ones you get on fridges and washing machines. They're like the energy sticker. It tells you how environmentally sound it is. That, look, that's the range of stickers. So green is essentially for things like the Toyota Prius and red at the other end is for sort of Ferraris and supercars. And the good thing is, it's made it much quicker going into a showroom and choosing a Absolutely. car. Absolutely, you just go for the red ones. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> red ones will all be interesting and the green ones will all be just... Boring. Boring, yeah, exactly. Uh, and there's another advantage as well, actually, to buying red cars, because environmentalists say that if we all drive real gas guzzlers, big SUVs and so on, then the world will heat up the ice caps will melt, the sea level will rise, they produced a map to show the effect of that, just the other... Wales is cut off! Hey! <laughs> look at that! If you buy red... Oh, and I know there are some Welsh people here, look at it the other way round. England's cut off! <laughs> the map business. One more piece of news. Um, anyone seen Heat magazine this week? They've done, a, they've done a list, no, no, they've done a list here, in here of, um, what's it called? Weird people that heat readers fancy. And they've got people this. like, oh, Boris Johnson and Jack Black and, um... Really Dermot hideous people. Gavin. Do you know who's won it? Richard <laughs> Hammond. That's nice, thank Weird you. Weird people. The best of a bad, the bad bunch. Readers. There are four people who've written in. One's Sam and one's Charlie. Cheers, Sam. They're men's Charlie. names. <laughs> Men fancy Hammond. He's a snappy dresser. He's got a vest on! <laughs> He's so enthusiastic about dogs! <laughs> I don't have a clue about cars. He is more appealable than me, and also, you could put him in your handbag. <laughs> Can we move on, please? Yeah, no, has anybody... Roundup of hot hatches there. Well, we've just got news of another one that's arrived. It's this from Ford, the Focus ST. Now, that has 222 brake horsepower, which is exactly the same as the Renault, I believe. Um, it's going to be pretty brisk, top speed, over 140 miles an hour, not to 60, about the six and a bit seconds mark. I 222? Think... Yep. So, less mental than the Vauxhall, then? Yes, it will kind of in between, but that could be a very good car. How fast? Uh, I've just said, if you'd been listening, but I can understand or not. 
over, I was over there. I yes. was walking on. Age, how far, I don't know how fast it is. How fast does it go, I, then? You just... How far? Why do I bother? Why do I bother? <laughs> I've just listen? told you and everybody else I here. I was it's... walking over here with my back. Look, you're back. old and deaf. You've got an excuse. You're... Over 140. One person has. How fast does it go from 0 to 60? Over 140. No, that's not true. <laughs> Why do we do this? Over 140 is its top speed. If you go from 0 to 60 and over 140, that's. That's, that's slow. poor. Well, that's that covered. Hey, now, you know, you know we're always banging on about speed cameras, OK? Yes, we well, do. I've got some facts that you might like to digest, OK? Uh, last year in Hertfordshire, the number of cameras they had went up by 24%. Deaths went up by 34%. <laughs> Wiltshire, cameras went up 14%. Deaths went up 22%. Uh, it's the same story in Avon and Somerset, same story in North Wales. OK, now, County Durham, no cameras, deaths went down 24%. <laughs> and North Yorkshire as well, no cameras, deaths down 9%. Right. And there's a very good reason for this. Because if you're driving down a road that's got loads of cameras, all you're looking at is your speedometer and into bushes. Like, and you're never <laughs> looking where you're going. You know the Institute of Advanced Motorists, this lot? <laughs> The wheel shuffles. The wheels, they always yes, drive. They do, a lot of that. think I meant? <laughs> they always drive. Anyway. <laughs> wheel shufflers. Yes, the wheel shufflers. Even they are now saying that um, they want more warning of speed cameras, and they've said, why can't they put the speed limit that is prevailing at the time on the back of the camera? That's a brilliant idea. That is a brilliant idea, because how many times do you see a camera and think, I don't know what the speed limit is? So that is going to be good enough. Rubbish. Well, it won't be mad enough. Wrong, Renault. You're wrong. You're wrong, wrong, wrong. And there's more bad news, because you know the Honda NSX? Another yeah. good car. Going as well. Oh. Honda have announced that they're dropping the NSX. Oh, so I thank you very much, Mr Blair. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you blaming him? Well, he takes the credit for the Olympics and the economy which he had nothing to do with, so he can take the blame for that. <laughs> Fair enough. Hey, now there is a new version of one of our favourite supercars on Top Gear. It's this, the Pagani Zonda F version, and it is stunning. 7.3 litre V12, 602 brake horsepower. 0 to 60 is now down to 3.6 seconds, 215 miles an hour. That will cost you mm, £390,000. <laughs> oh, what would on, you sell? Everything. Really? To have one of those, yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, obviously... House. Oh, house, kids, wife, all of that, yeah. Horse? Dogs, horses, cats. No, I'm, I've, I've been thinking about this. It gets down to... You see, you don't need two kidneys, and you don't need two to drive that, and you get a lot of money, so... Well, I'd on sell that a basis, kidney. you only need one lung. Yeah, I'd get shot of a lung. Ears. Perhaps you don't need the outside bit, do you? Nose. Yeah, like, I've, I don't think you need these two fingers on each hand, cos you could drive like that. Sell those. <laughs> yeah, you could sell all of those. What about your penis? No, I need that. <laughs> no. Not if you haven't got a nose. You won't need... No, I will. I do. I've got a plan. Sperm banks. <laughs> 25 quid a shot, you get paid. Is, it right? Is that true? Is that true? Four, yeah. Four of those a day, you could pay for your petrol and your insurance quite easily. You could run it. I mean, you'd be a bit, like, slumped at the wheel. Put my hands on the... <laughs> Maybe but... you could splash out on a zombie. Hey! Yeah, you could. <laughs> For any children watching, ask your mum and dad what we're on about. <laughs> right. New car of the year, OK, is the Aston Martin V8 Vantage. No question about that. And here it is. I've driven it. Have you? I've driven it. Come on, then. What's it like? Well, unfortunately, there's an embargo on it, OK, which means I'm not allowed to talk about it until August the 30th. Well, we're, which not, is, we're not on air. I know, it's a real shame, because I really wanted to talk about the noise, because, honestly, it is... You put your foot down, and it's this wail from the V8, OK? Because there's this um, valve in the exhaust, which I can't mention. You can't tell us this. No, I can't tell you this. <laughs> but when you put your foot down hard, it flicks open, and you can hear that car two miles away. Oh, That's how loud it is. I wish you could have told us that. I know, I'm really sorry. <laughs> And the other thing I can't tell you is the ride, OK? It's firm, but it's really well controlled. It's like the most... Oh, it's a fabulous thing. You see, I would have loved to have heard that. Yeah. I'd like to know that. <laughs> That's uh, a shame, but you can't tell us how fast it goes or anything? No, 175, can't mention that. You can't that. tell us that? No. no, sadly not. I have to say, I can't wait till the 30th, where we can find out all this. I know. Yeah, I like <laughs> <it>. <laughs> yeah, it's a good day. Presumably, um, you're not allowed to tell us how much it costs, either. The price? Mm. No.
Actually, I really can't tell you how much it costs. Because remember when they said they were going to do that? They said, oh, it's going to be the same money as a 911, and it's going to be £60,000, and it was 65, 70, 75. It's like an auction. Oh, somebody put their <laughs> hand up, for God's sake. When we came on air, it was 80,000. It's probably about 87 now. <laughs> and there's a three year waiting list for that. By the time, if you're uh, at the end of it, you'll be paying half a million quid. <laughs> now, look, you know now we've got speed cameras to capture speeding? Yes. You know all the hair dryers they used to use in the olden days, yeah? What, do you know the, what the radar ones? Yeah, the radar yeah. ones. Do you know what they're doing with them now? Throwing no. them away. Yeah. No? Yeah, it's not like the law enforcement agencies aren't busy at the moment, to be honest. But anyway, they were out and about the other day catching people speeding on the river. No. What? <laughs> well, the speed limit, we were told, is 7.4 kilometres an hour. What's that? Four and a... Four and a half. That's walking pace. I could swim faster than that. <laughs> they're going to be prosecuting poo sticks. That's... <laughs> Speeding. Yeah. It's this obsession everybody's got now that speed kills. It doesn't. Speed has never killed anyone. Suddenly becoming stationary. That's what gets you. <laughs> That's the killer. That will do it. Yeah. I don't know if you're aware of this, but I am officially Top Gear's map correspondent. It seems to have turned out every, every week. week. Every <laughs> week. I don't know how this happened. But every week I'm sent a map. This week's map is this one um, that somebody's decided to send us because they claim it's unterrable. Rubbish. Rubbish. No, well, I could see, tear I've, it. I've seen that one coming, so I've given you... Uh, there, there you go. It's unterrible. Apparently, can't be done. You see... Look, you That's can't... That's true. <laughs> it's a mate. No, you can... Look, you can't... <laughs> it says no biting. Yeah, well, it's, it's aimed at bikers, so that's what they're... Yeah, exactly. I'm going to eat right. my man. They are waterproof as well, which I think is quite a good so idea. That's actually excellent on well, a bike, a waterproof map. That's exactly what you want. Besides, if you've ever want. tried to use a soggy one on a bike, I think that is actually quite a good idea. Another one in my car gets mangled. So. Yeah, no, it works. What are you right. doing? You can see if it... <laughs> yeah, you can burn the map. So you can't tear it, but you can burn it. That's my map! I wanted, I wanted to keep that. God. I'm covered in molten plastic <laughs> and it's stuck to the sole of your. What am I going to do if I want to go in. That's Birmingham. It was. It's, oh, it's Birmingham's gone. You've completely ruined it. Right. What's next? Hey. 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 You know those old radiators? That used to get in schools, well, they still do in schools and hospitals, those old Victorian ones. I mean, ones. cast iron heavy ones. Yeah, the ones that actually work. You know yes. what I'm talking about? Audi has decided to put one of those on the front of its next car. Oh my word! <laughs> Look at that! That is a radiator. It is. It's, 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 it's enormous. It is. Other things you can get on it are a chimney, mullioned windows, nice. horse brasses, got that's, a cellar. That's not a tree behind it, it's got a thatched roof. Yep. Look at that. <laughs> I know what the engine is as well. Well, it's an arger. Hey! <laughs> that's, have you got any proper facts on it, Boris Jeremy? Uh, no. Right, to so be honest, just... I haven't. No, well, all they're saying is this, this might be the next Audi All Road, which was the stupidest car ever, the last one. I never got that. Well, it was an Audi estate that was a little bit taller and massively well, more much. expensive. What's that all about? If somebody tells somebody in a boardroom at Audi somewhere that is. Hideous, yeah, no, it is. So, oh, well, now it's really that's a definite case of buying out while stocks last. So you made a mistake there. You've just gone and reviewed the wrong car. Thank you. <laughs> uh, anyway, listen. There's a new Honda Civic coming out very soon, and um, I've got the details of it here from Honda. They say. For the first time, Honda presents a Civic that challenges the top end of the compact class, a premium sports compact for the growing sector in the C segment. I don't know what you're saying. I don't know what I'm saying. Does anybody really here speak marketing? It's just some words. I've got a picture of the new car here, OK? Ooh, ooh. Fabulous looking thing. And from the back, look at those triangular exhaust pipes. Nice. Now, it's been specifically designed to look like this to frighten old people. <laughs> Because, you know, Honda are pathological about the fact that only old people buy their cars. Yes. The average age of a Civic buyer is like 130, 12. At least, yeah. Really are. So they've done that so they can right, don't buy this. I'm so going to buy my mother one. Just to annoy them. Just to annoy Honda. I yeah. mean, really unbelievable. Um, anyway, I've got some details on it. It's 13,000 to 18,000 pounds, same as a Focus, same sort of engines you get the Focus. So that'll be totally reliable and it's built in Britain, which is exactly the kind of thing that old people like. It is. So there you are. If you're elderly, that's your next car. There it's the same as a Nissan 350, that thing you like, that Datsun with a yeah, Renault engine. It's a very nice same car. as a Mazda RX 8. A diesel is faster than a Focus RS. I am now now officially going to shoot myself. <laughs>
And so, to the news. Now, if you go into a dealership these days and buy a new car, you'll probably get something free thrown in, like a sunroof or some alloy wheels or something like that. But anyway, it's all rubbish, because Proton, who make the Gen 2, have come up with the best special offer ever. Well, you need a special offer with a Gen 2. To yeah, there it is. Yes. It's brilliant. It's free dual controls. Like, you like they have a driving school. Yeah. Extra pedals and stuff. Yeah, and it's great, because if you go on a long journey with a mate, you can share the driving. <laughs> Think how much fun you could have with dual controls. Every speed camera. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, no. No! And who do they prosecute? Yeah, when the policeman comes who to the window. Who was driving? He, 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 yes. <laughs> that was just breathtaking. How much is it? Well, it's uh, £8,795, which is reasonably cheap. The best thing about it is you can get one of those with a £1 deposit. We should, so I think we we should. should have one. Yeah. I want one. Yeah. I want one. And you know the car roster thing we have to come down here, we have to share cars to come down here when we do the show? Yeah. Put him in the driver's seat and give him the stig in the passenger seat. That's <laughs> <laughs> it. I paid a lot of money to see his face when he got to work that day. Oh, you made me go 60! <laughs> <laughs> Now, the other week, you made on it. It's like an active cruise control. Uh, we've got some footage here of how it works, OK? You're driving along, there's a radar in front of you, and it can sense if the car in front has stopped, or even if it is an emergency stop, and it will bring you to a big halt. So you don't crash. It's very clever, isn't so it? So you don't have to touch the brakes, it will just sense the car in front. OK, now, a German uh, TV company went to Mercedes and said, we'd quite like to film that happening, for real, if we may. So Mercedes said, yeah, come on down the factory, we'll set up an experiment for you and film it. And this is what happened. Here's the car, okay, out of the building, into the fog. Guy can see nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Look at it! Just, oh, I just love it when things go wrong for the Germans. Oh, I'm feeling a little hot under my collar. <laughs> and they were German taking it. I like the idea that once it had all settled and the fog had gone, a little German voice said, there you go, it stopped. <laughs> Well, it did. <laughs> and now we... Now, it is time for the news. And you may know that I've sort of become Top Gear's official map correspondent. And people have now started sending stuff in for me for the show, which is great. Things like this. You know you can go onto the website of the RAC on the internet to get hold of a route. It's a route planner. Well, yeah. Anne Marshall did exactly that. And she's wrote to tell us about it. She said she tried to get from Nottingham to Biddeford. That okay. seems sorry. More sort of Devon, mate. But she'd put in that she wanted to avoid using the M5, which is fair enough, because sometimes you want to avoid a particular motorway yeah. for whatever reason. Who'd like to see the route that the RAC route planner advised her to take? <laughs> Here it is. There's Nottingham. <laughs> no, because in fairness, it does avoid the M5. It's across through Ireland, yeah. France, and there you are. Excellent. But well, we did that's... actually check this out. We wouldn't just put it up. We did check it out, and that is genuinely what you come up with. There's even a route thing. Well, it's quite there? a good system. You don't just get the map. You get written instructions as well, which you could maybe keep next to you in the car. This is it. <laughs> I kid you not. This is the route. There's a good... Where's it go? You are continuing. You are entering Cork. <laughs> you are leaving the United Kingdom and entering France. <laughs> to get to Devon. I think it that's is. absolutely brilliant. Thank you for sending that. No, really thank you. And if anybody can be bothered to look on the internet and find uh, one that's more stupid than this, we'd love to hear from you. Now, a bit of bike news. This week, uh, there's been talks at high level in government of capping the noise from bikes' exhaust at 74 decibels. Good. Now, that's about as loud as a hairdryer. Good. And it goes further than that, because what they're saying is, if you were caught with a bike louder than that, the police would be able to confiscate it. I'd go further. Yeah. I'd shoot you in the middle of your it's face. Just what? You know, <laughs> it's just because you hate bikes, mate. That's... It isn't. It's because I live on a road in the Cotswold, and every weekend, city boys come out on their PQRS double TTs, OK? <laughs> it's ruin it. And a Japanese four-cylinder bike being revved to about 11,500 RPM sounds glorious. Yep. Shrieking and... Triumph, triumph three-cylinder motorcycle engine. You don't get that noise anywhere Growling else. Away. Right. You told me the other day that your bike, whatever it is, sounds like you belching. No, I didn't. Did. No, you what did. I said no. was the sound at low revs from the exhaust is like the sound that a burp makes when it's forming down here. I don't burp. want to hear a forming burp going past my house on a Sunday afternoon <laughs> with someone bit... dressed like a Power Ranger. <laughs> I don't want that. I don't. don't. 
Slap him. He's wrong. I'm so not wrong. And actually, I'm quite glad that you don't like it. I'm actually quite glad about this possible legislation because I think bikes should be slightly outside the law. That's why we yeah. ride them to be a little bit rebellious because I don't want you to like my bike. I want it to upset you. Okay, Mr. Rebel, Mr. Easy Rider. Let me ask you a simple question. A few years from now, okay, you've got two daughters. I have. Some spotty oik turns up at your house on a PQRS Z double T, okay? I've come to take your Izzy out. What are you going to do? Ha! Got him. I'm going to keep a big bucket of sand by the door, and when I see him at the door, I'm going to go and stick my head in it, and then the problem's gone away. <laughs> <laughs> I won't have to worry anymore. You're going to let a man on a bike take your daughter out. Oh, that's well, a difficult one. How it about is... if I turn up in ten years' time to take your Izzy? <laughs> On the other side of the door, I'm going to have a big bat. <laughs> because in ten years' time, his daughter's going to be 14 and you're going to be 75. <laughs> That's exactly. one of the reasons why he'd have to clobber you with a bat, probably with a nail in it. Ooh, now, uh, on average, every year, four people crash into my garden. Four? Four. That's more than the national average. It is, you're Not right. Not many people have that many people crash into their front garden. Gets worse. This week, two. Two in a week. In one week? Two in a week. And I think the problem is, they know I live there and they're sort of, hey, look at me, look at me. And the problem is, okay, can I just explain this? I have been driven round Fiorano in a Ferrari by Michael Schumacher. That was impressive. Watching a Vauxhall Nova bouncing across my front <laughs> lawn doesn't float my boat. There's a perfectly simple explanation for this. You bought a house on a tight bend, mm -hmm. didn't you? What have you been doing for the last 15 years? driving around tight bends on television going, POWER! <laughs> and then you're surprised when you wake up and there's a Peugeot 106 in your potting shed. That's Why a good theory. Thank, Thank you, James, theory. for that one. Um, no, is this roof? Because, look, they've been to Ikea, haven't they? That is a flat-pack roof. <laughs> That's very Tell it Swedish. No, it's very good. Uh, now, yes, the Alfa Romeo Brera. Remember that? It was in the studio last series. You two were getting a bit tumescent about it. Oh, it's fab. The Brera, it's just a fab Beautiful. car. Quite a nice-looking car. I've got some more details of it. Let's have a look at it first. There you are. Very pretty. 2.2-litre version. Price will be £25,000. That's a lot. It is a lot. That's £3,000 more than a Mazda RX-8. Nought to 60, 8.6 seconds. That's, That's a lot. Too. That's all. That's like that's slow. He means. In fact, it's the same as a 1976 Rover. Ooh, Still want one? <laughs> um, yes, yep, I do. Yep, we do. It's like Cameron Diaz, isn't it? We know that she's a vegetarian. We know she's a committed eco mentalist. Would you say no? No. You might. <laughs> <laughs> that is Cameron Diaz with wheels on. That is. Have you seen this? There's a survey out this week, okay, that says 25% of British men would rather be a passenger in a car with Jeremy Clarkson than with Angelina Jolie. Oh, for God's sake! <laughs> let's, let's have a look at Ms. Jolie, just so we can see what oh, we're on what? about here. <laughs> the world has gone mad. You're with me, aren't you? Yes, Jeremy. <laughs> He'd rather have me than no. her. <laughs> Quite I possibly. Put that wrong. I'd have guessed that. Look at him. <laughs> now listen, 25% of British men. I have been in a car with Jeremy Clarkson. To be honest, I haven't been in a car with Angelina Jolie, but I'm prepared to take a punt that Angelina Jolie is the better option. <laughs> Hey, now, Sartre, you know their little plastic cars, OK? They're in serious trouble financially. They're bringing down Mercedes and uh, Chrysler, the joint owners of them. Uh, but it doesn't matter, because they've got a new car, and here it is. Oh, everything's OK. <laughs> everything's OK. Yeah, and fine. now, take it away and bring Angelina back. That's better. <laughs> if Smart made that, their financial problems would be over. We've launched a new car. It's called the Angelina. <laughs> Now, he did um, Top of the Pops the other day. Oh, do I know that? It was the first time he'd ever done live TV, and I was there in my living room with my Sky Plus on very record. <laughs> <laughs> every humiliating cock-up.
And there weren't any, no, because no, live, no, live, live Mr. Ra local radio DJ, Ped, live, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I need to do it live. I'm yeah. much better live. Anyway, the thing is, OK, while I was doing it, I noticed that one of the acts in particular was absolute rubbish, OK? Just... A, they were appalling. And I was thinking when they were banging the garden furniture together, I would rather listen to an exhaust pipe, OK, than this. And that gave me an idea, OK? Can you use a car engine as a musical instrument, OK? Could you, for instance, re-record the theme music for Top Gear using nothing but engines? Well, you couldn't, obviously, because you have no musical talent whatsoever. I don't, but he does. He has, old Captain Slow there, has a degree <laughs> in music. Actually, it's absolutely true. So I decided that I would take up Jeremy's challenge. We get literally no letters a week, uh, every week, from people <laughs> saying, look, I want to go to work, but I want to leave a trail of blue and red smoke in my wake while I'm going along. Yes, it's not easy if you can't afford a red Arab or if you have no ability to fly one. However, help is now at hand from Japan, where they've come out with these. These tyres, they say, if you spin them, will emit coloured smoke. <laughs> Yeah, now the thing was, is that this morning, to test this out, we bolted some of those tyres to the back of a TBR, put the stig in it, and this is what happened. There he is, look, and away he goes. Oh, look! <laughs> hey! Now, we are told... That's like a red arrow. It is. We are told that these tyres do affect handling and performance somewhat, and braking. <laughs> Yeah, but what a way to arrive at work. Yeah, look, at, look at the stick. He's, he's sort of enjoying himself in there, is he? Look at him. <laughs> That's a happy stick. I'm a red arrow, I'm not a stick. <laughs> look at me. It's <laughs> <laughs> a happy stick. Yeah, I'm very happy stick. <laughs> They're about, uh, what, 200 quid a pop, aren't yeah, they? they? 200 are. quid. So if you want to do that, there you go. They could use those when they need a new pope. What, and they have the coloured smoke? Yeah, up the chimney. What, so you get some little Italian pikey in his Fiat Uno in a fireplace somewhere in the Vatican? Is he ready? Yeah, right, now! <laughs> <laughs> now put Angelina back. Mm. Uh, now, there is some talk at the moment about the BBC dumbing down. Yeah. <laughs> so, we're going to try and do something about that. Sorry, mate. <laughs> so, do be warned that this next item may contain some information. Conscious oh, now! Again. I have not. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just get on with the news, can we? Because, I'm not joking, we have the most important piece of news ever to reveal yep. to the Top Gear audience. <clears throat> Top Gear, this pokey motoring show on yes. BBC Two, this week, won, I've got it here, <laughs> in New York, <laughs> an Emmy! We did! We won an Emmy! <laughs> That is an Emmy. Yeah. What this is for, OK, it's for the best non-scripted entertainment show that wasn't made in America. Yes, That's indeed. us. <laughs> Why didn't you go to the ceremony to pick that up? Well, because I was writing the script for this <laughs> week's show. Yeah. yeah. The thing is, though, when The Office, you remember the sitcom series thing, when that won some Golden Globes recently, yeah. the whole of the BBC ground to a halt whilst everyone said congratulations, and they were showered with, like, gifts and gold and diamonds were, The and director everything. general of the BBC spent a week rubbing warm pig fat into Ricky Gervais. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> he did. He did. So... How many chocolate-covered lap dancers do you think have been sent to us? How many do you reckon? Not a damn thing. Nothing! <laughs> and if you think that's outrageous, then please write to us, as of Monday, to Top Gear, Channel 4 Television, yes, yes. <laughs> 124 <laughs> Horse Free Road, London, SW1. Now, remember the car that Mercedes was going to base on a fish? Oh, yeah. Remember yeah, that, the that bionic one. car? Here's a picture of it, look. That's the fish that, that we're going to base that's it on. That's the fish, yeah. yeah. The car... The car looks like this, the bionic car. <laughs> it's still the fish. He no, just... that, well, yeah, I mean, that's been designed in a wind tunnel to be like a fish, in a wind... say. A wind you can't design tunnel. something to look like a fish in a wind tunnel. Yes, you can. And they did. And they've built it and they've run it. It's been out on an industrial estate in Surrey, yeah. where it's done 10 miles an hour. What's the point of it? 
Well, it's got a um, sheep wee-wee <laughs> system in it that goes into the exhaust and cleans up the emissions. Yeah, but what is the what point of the car? If I'm going to buy a car that looks like that, I want the salesman to say, the reason you're driving a car that looks like this is because it does something. It did a lap of the industrial estate in 3 minutes 32 seconds. Was it a big lap? 0.6 miles. It's not very quick. Would anybody here buy that car? No. No, uh, but wait. No, 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 no. Can I get back to you? Yes. <laughs> Uh, you don't like Phantom. I think that is absolutely that is a good. stunning looking car. I, I mean, that's one of the best looking cars I've ever seen. I really want one of those. What? Right, the bionic <laughs> fish car. <laughs> Better be good. It better be good. It's got a 1.8 litre extremely efficient diesel engine. Everybody's with... got a diesel no, engine. Because this one's got sheep urine in it. And that means that the emissions are reduced by up to 80%. And yet strength and crash safety of the bionic shell is unaffected. So it's no safer, is what they're saying, than a normal car. It's a diesel car. You just have... I'm and sorry. it looks like that. And it looks like that. Take it away. I never want to see it again in my life, ever. Now.